Hi, Janine. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah, I'm so glad that we're connecting and just like we just hit record, but we were chatting a little bit before this and um, I'm like, I'm already so excited about where this conversation is going to go and it's and the, the stuff I know we're going to talk about is seemingly like really present. This might even lead into kind of our first question, but like seemingly really present in my personal life, but also in the conversations that I'm having with my community, with my clients, with women, with my friends. And, and it's, it's really the conversation of pleasure and sexuality and sex and, and manifestation and the ooey gooey juiciness of it all. And so I'm just preparing everyone right now. This is going to be good. And I feel like it's like, I feel like we all need to have like pen and paper for this, <laughs> for this <laughs> conversation. But before we dive all the way in, one thing I do want to ask you is what are you currently reclaiming? Mm, great question. Thank you. Mm, uh, I, you know, I think what's coming to mind is reclaiming my spirituality. Mm. Um, that's something I have always been disconnected from. I didn't, I wasn't raised in any sort of religion or anything like that. And through my program, my Vita certification, mm -hmm. it was sprinkled in all throughout a different spirituality with like the witchy side of things. And I've always loved doing different kinds of moon rituals and playing around with different things and manifesting. And so this year, I feel like it's really opening myself up more and more to that, opening up myself mm -hmm. to what is the universe and my connection to source and all of that sort of thing I love this and um can you share with those who aren't familiar with Vita with the training that you have moved through Yes. Um, so it is Layla Martin's VITA coaching certification and VITA stands for vital integrated tantric approach to mm -hmm. sex, love and relationships. And so the program is really founded between this beautiful balance between spirituality and modern science. So it's rooted in Tantra and Taoism, as well as neurobiology, modern somatics, attachment therapy so it's this beautiful dance between these two worlds for that really lasting holistic transformation amazing how did you get there because I, I I don't know your I don't know your story so I would love this has this always been present in your life is this a new thing for you share with us a little bit about that journey what brought you there how did you get there yeah, oh sure. Thank you. Please, please. Um, and thank you. Yes. Um, so my background is actually in marketing and management um, mm -hmm. and doing website builds, social media, email newsletters, that sort of thing. I made a solid go at being a content creator, was able to build up a decent platform, make money through sponsorships and things like that. And it got to a point where it just, it wasn't it. It wasn't doing it for me. It felt like I was pushing, pushing, pushing. I really didn't like putting so much of my time online, like spending hours and hours and hours. What am I getting back? And mm -hmm. the impact wasn't there. I really wanted to make a bigger impact. Mm -hmm. And the consumer side of it, I had such strong values that it actually made it hard to make as much as I wanted to because I was declining <laughs> so many things. <laughs> And <laughs> yeah, like, sorry, I'm not doing an ad for Febreze. It just does right. not align. <laughs> and so I tried to really create this online community. It was a private membership community. I facilitated different workshops on like hormone health, communicating boundaries, emergency preparedness, all different things to right. really help empower and support women. And after about a year, year and a half, it still it wasn't clicking. And it mm -hmm. felt like very forceful, very pushing. And I knew I was meant for more. I wanted mm -hmm. to make that impact. And I felt like I was in that place of facilitator, connecting people with the experts and holding the space. Okay. And it just wasn't right. And so as I'm trying to figure out all of this, I saw an ad for one of Layla Martin's freebies. I think it was like a self-care 21-day challenge. 
mm-hmm. tried it, loved it. And yeah. Within like a month and a half, I was signed up for her year long 650 plus hours certification. Like it's a hefty program. If anyone had asked me three months before that moment, if this is what I would be doing now, I would have had no idea. Like I, it was not on my radar at all. And so now having gone through the program, here I am, I've had my own personal journey that just started with feeling resentful, feeling burnt out constantly, exhausted, Mm -hmm. and just not in a great place, like not showing up the way I wanted to for my family. Mm -hmm. And it was through prioritizing weekly date nights with myself Mm -hmm. that I started to see that shift. And that kind of started that journey, which began with journaling and meditation and a bath and Mm -hmm. really time for myself slowly led down the road of exploring breath work of exploring Mm -hmm. pleasure practices and really seeing the impact that's made that it's so much more than like embracing your sexuality that it Mm -hmm. like boosts your confidence brings back your creativity your playfulness your like deep connection and Mm -hmm. I just think every woman should have this accessible to them and so that's what's really my driving force in doing this work it sounds like regardless of what work you've been doing, the, like the root of it is, is empowering women and supporting women to like, I know we won't, people won't see the video, but like my hand is like going from tight to open. It's like this, like lotus flower, like blossoming or this rose blossoming. It's this expansion. And, um, mm -hmm. has that always felt important to you? Like even growing up, but, hmm, I'm like, just, did my mind even think about empowering women? What was your relationship like with women growing up? Like, because I feel like there's also this piece that floats around of like the sister wound where there's like, hmm, do I want to empower women or am I fighting with women? Like, what's your, what's your history in that? your experience there yeah not great (laughs) definitely (laughs) touching on that sister wound um in terms of like women influences my mom was a single mom worked so hard putting herself through school while raising us Mm -hmm. very much that um martyrdom very self-sacrificing no time for self-care didn't have much of a community around her so I didn't really Mm -hmm. see any examples of that she Mm -hmm. definitely taught me how to work hard stand Mm -hmm. up for myself um, Mm -hmm. how to create a life that you want Um, Mm -hmm. it was through her hard work she put in and then that's really allowed me to step into what I am in now And my grandmother was a really strong influence in that strong woman side as well. Mm -hmm. But so many sister wounds, I found I definitely clicked with men more, Mm -hmm. um, which I still do click with men quite easily. But there is a lot more of that sisterhood community that's really blossoming Mm -hmm. in more recent years. Mm -hmm. I found myself repeatedly backstabbed um with close close friends um Mm -hmm. spreading lies about me and things like that so that was a really hard thing to overcome and a big focus of mine actually in this past year is learning Mm -hmm. how to use my voice and Mm -hmm. really stand up in my unapologetic authenticity and feel safe doing that Mm -hmm. because time and time again when I shine I would be backstabbed and lied about mm-hmm. and cut down. And so those wounds were very, very deep for sure. Yeah. yeah. And do you believe, I know, I know what I believe around this. I'm curious if it all is, is almost like what came first, the chicken or the egg. And it's like, cause I know how I behaved as a, a teenage girl and a young twenties woman and and there was not a lot of self-assurance or self-knowingness or any self-confidence, even if it looked like it, there wasn't. And I believe that that's where all of those backstabby behaviors root from is like a complete disconnect of, of that self. So this work that you're doing to really empower women to know themselves like to the core is, is I, I think a big piece of, if not the whole missing piece of what creates all of that wounding in the first place, because a woman who is like truly connected to her essence and to her, her beingness, she knows that she's connected to everyone and everything else. So there wouldn't be hurtful 
behaviors. You know what I'm, yeah. How does, do you agree? Do you have a different take on that maybe? Absolutely. I completely agree with that. And at the same time, like for me, my big issue in those like late teens, early twenties years was with that lack of confidence with those abandonment issues, it was seeking validation in Mm -hmm. all the wrong places. Right. And quite promiscuous and all of the different things. And it Mm -hmm. was just constantly giving my power away. Yeah. And really like pleasure wasn't anything for me. It was like to get that validation. It's in service for the others. Like you're lucky if you get something out of it kind of thing. Right. And so all of this work is really for me, the root of it is empowering women to really find their power within get in tune with their inner knowing Mm -hmm. so they know their boundaries they speak Mm -hmm. up for themselves and in doing so they create that life that's really aligned for them they show up in their relationships in a way that is in alignment and not out of reactivity or triggers or doing those Mm -hmm. things they should be doing and I think Mm -hmm. there's all of this like medical stuff that comes from it when we live that life of people pleasing or even on the rebellious side as well, we're so disconnected, we're repressing so many parts of ourselves that we begin to have some serious health issues. And I think that's why so many women have all these different hormonal things going on and PCOS and all these different autoimmune diseases is from Mm -hmm. suppressing our emotions and being so out of tune with ourselves. Yeah. 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 Thank you for that. Um, what is the, like, oh gosh, I'm sure that the whole course, I mean, an entire year, what do you say? 650 hours. Over 650 hours. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What (laughs) I'm I'm thinking of my yoga teacher training and I'm like, Oh, 200 hours. Not so bad. Um, was there like, (laughs) I'm sure there were so many, was there like a moment that your whole mind blew open? Was there like a pivotal, like, whoa, aha, anything like what, what are, or maybe there's plenty, but what are some of your like big pieces that you took away from that training? There's definitely a few. Um, One of the ones that sticks out so much that I find myself talking about time and time again was actually a part of our pre-course series. (laughs) I'm not even sure if it's a part of the 650 (laughs) hours. It's kind of like the orientation, giving us the foundation of knowledge to begin to go into things. Mm -hmm. And Layla said, I believe it's one of the key tantric principles, is that the greatest transformation comes through the taboo. Mm-hmm. And that just hit me so deep. And it's like, yes, that makes so much sense. And in terms of mm-hmm. sexuality, mm-hmm. it's this taboo thing. So often it's pushed to the mm-hmm. side, has this shame, embarrassment, mm-hmm. disgust, all of mm-hmm. these different things associated with it. So when we can pursue that, when we can face it, mm-hmm. learn to understand, love, and then embrace it. It's like this big dark cloud we have hanging over ourselves. All of a sudden that weight is lifted and it has this huge ripple effect. Again, Mm -hmm. like touching all those different areas of our life. And so it's this thing that we hide that we can really bring to that light that creates Mm -hmm. this profound transformation and it's like we become unfuckwithable like Mm -hmm. we've accepted these deep dark nitty-gritty parts of ourselves like if someone brings it up so what yeah Mm -hmm. that's me yeah Mm -hmm. I did that yeah I am that way Mm -hmm. what of it right yeah 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 so interesting how and I I know it's not like this everywhere in the world but we're in North America and it's definitely like this here where most of us are raised. Yes. Sex is maybe it's not bad, but it's not to be talked about. It's not to be seen. It's not to be like explored. You know, it's not to be. And so it's, you know, self-touch masturbation. Oh my God, shame on you. Like that's not something you do. And, and then on the flip side, you have the porn industry where it's like, okay, so on one hand we're told, this is really bad and don't do it. And so it goes into this like shamey energy. And then, well, what do we see? We see porn, which is this like, quote unquote, perfect 
ex like description and showcase of what this is now. Oh, so we're not allowed to talk about it or learn about it. So I'm going to learn about it through this platform. Oh, wow. Those people are perfect. The whole experience is perfect. Nothing goes wrong. Nothing is messy. Like it's all perfect. And wow. And what a twisted way for us to come into what is actually like the most pure connecting human thing. Like it's how we exist. How is it not celebrated more actually? Like it is the only reason I'm alive. It's the only reason you're alive. Why are we not celebrating and sharing about it and teaching about it in a really good way? I don't know if that, that's not even like a full question. This is me just like spewing. I don't know if I, if you have anything to say to that, but it's just such a mind trip to me that it is so taboo. You know, like I didn't personally feel comfortable talking about sex until I was like 34, 35. God. And even then I was like, Ooh, this feels really edgy to talk about. Oh, okay. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. What, where that takes you. Yeah, absolutely. It's so conflicting because we have like sex cells. Sex is really <laughs> everywhere. And that, yes. <laughs> when it comes but don't to... be too sexy. Yeah. yeah. You can't be too sexy, but also don't be approved. Right. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's so conflicting throughout our whole lives as soon as we yeah. begin to see different shows right like damsel yeah. in distress and like she carries yeah. herself in a certain way other characters don't and they don't get that attention and it's mm -hmm. so conflicting and so confusing and like you said like where else do we get our information it's mm -hmm. not okay to talk about it it's mm -hmm. something very behind closed doors I remember being like 15 ish having one of my like first early experiences with a boyfriend and them mentioning like hair down there and I was like yeah. mortified I had no idea like this is yeah. a thing what so then I'm searching on like nexopia groups I think so this, like, this young teenager clueless trying to find information in all the wrong places Mm -hmm. and the porn industry perpetuates it even more and so that's why I think it's so important to have these conversations to be able to speak freely because as you said as well like sex is this beautiful sacred thing it is mm -hmm. the creation of life our sexual energy is our life mm -hmm. force energy it's mm -hmm. how we create other humans it's beautiful and all of the different hormones that flood our system allow mm -hmm. us to bond with our partners to boost our confidence to get all those different happy hormones so we're showing up the way we want to yet it has all of this shame and conflicting messages to it and when it can become something that we speak about freely get education on mm -hmm. learn to navigate situations in a more pleasurable, empowering way, not be so embarrassed mm -hmm. to talk about different things. Mm -hmm. It becomes empowering. We get to be able to tap in to this other side of things to this greater degree because sex is such a spectrum, right? right? Like we can mm -hmm. have these more uncomfortable, perhaps not very pleasurable situations. We don't get a whole lot out of it. So it makes sense. We might brush that under the rug. We're not going to do a whole lot with it because what does it do for us? But there's this beautiful spectrum where we can really build that relationship with ourselves, with our partners, experience just ecstatic bliss this expansive mm -hmm. pleasure that really nourishes ourselves from the inside out and mm -hmm. how incredible would it be for women to be celebrated in this and men as well the people however they identify to really be celebrated in mm -hmm. their sexuality to be able to speak openly about it to be able to harness this power really in yeah. how we're able to show up and connect with others I think it'd yeah. be a very different world. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's funny. It's like one of very few things that are the same for all of us. You know, yes, we all need oxygen so we can connect on that. We all also came from sex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all also came from that. <laughs> 
Um, you spoke before we hit record, you used the word nourishment, which I love that word. And you used it around the topic of self-pleasure. And I would love to hear you riff on that a little bit. Yes, I would love to. <laughs> Thank you. And so as we just touched on a little bit, our sexual energy is our life force energy. It's how we are created and it is this very potent energy. And there's a way we can really tap into that and to really use it to energize ourselves, to nourish ourselves. And I think self-care, again, it's like this big range and it can be very surface level. It becomes almost like this to-do list of different things you should be doing. And it's very surface level. It might feel good in the moment, but you don't get a whole lot out of it. And then there's, of course, a deeper side to it all. And one of those deeper sides, I think, is really using pleasure as nourishment. And pleasure doesn't necessarily mean sexual pleasure. Again, it's this full range. We can get pleasure just walking out in nature and fully taking in all of our different senses, the sights, the smells, the feelings of it. Mm -hmm. Having your morning tea or morning coffee and just really being present with it, the heat of the cup, the taste, mm -hmm. the smells. Mm -hmm. And then one of my favorite pleasure practices for nourishment is a face massage. Mm -hmm. So... It feels super fucking weird when you're doing it for your first time. <laughs> okay, I'm here for and it. And it's amazing. Because if you think about it, like your face, some um, people get facial. So they've had a little bit of care and attention to their face. But mm -hmm. to really take time to go in there, to really massage your jaw, your cheekbones, your scalp on this deep personal level with like a nice oil that smells good perhaps you're in the bath and that warmth and really taking your time to love on yourself mm -hmm. is so nourishing at a much deeper level than doing your different beauty routines or whatever it might be and so there's a way of really harnessing that and a big part of that comes with presence with mm -hmm. mindfulness. And then when you go into more of the sexual energy side of things, one of my favorite things to do, and I'll do this after pretty much every sexual experience, because it's so accessible, like, why wouldn't you do it, mm -hmm. is after orgasm after the end of your session is to take that sexual energy instead of just letting it like escape and go and carry on with your day get present with it feel it mm -hmm. and use it to nourish your body sending that mm -hmm. energy to your bones your blood and your cells each mm -hmm. corner of your body your arms your legs your fingers your toes mm -hmm. and just really sending that energy being present with it it truly does energize you and nourish you from the inside out and it's so accessible it's so simple mm -hmm. and it, it gives us that extra boost and like I said like why wouldn't you do that right mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's right there wow. yeah and I, I I feel too like I think back on past partners and and I know I know like now hindsight but the 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 actual like intimate connection, the, the like emotional connection, the, the energetic connection wasn't quite there. And so there, it was almost like sex, you know, the experience would be done and, and that, and then it was just like done and like up and someone's going to shower and someone's going to do this and back to whatever we were doing before. And, and my partner that I'm with now, it's like, we'll just stay, we'll just stay in the embrace or we'll just stay laying there for a long time after. And, and there isn't that need to move and we'll stay in the mess and sweat and like all of whatever's there. And, and yeah, that really is kind of what's happening is, and I'm going to bring in that much more intentionally, but just, I think about how many couples are, I'll just say like having sex to have sex and there isn't intentionality around it. And there isn't 
that like connection because you can have sex with anything and anyone and there's no connection Mm -hmm. and and the difference there and I imagine I mean we feel different in those different experiences as well one feels quite connecting and and expansive expansive pardon me and and yeah like almost like bigger you know it's like it fills you up more like you really receive from it versus the yeah the the lack of connection and I don't know if this is a a question that you have an answer for but the couples that are no that actually feels like a huge question but in your experience or even in the conversations that you have with people are like is there like is it like 50 50 like what are we looking at like how many couples are actually like really like really connecting and and how many aren't I think because I was of the how many aren't for so long my assumption is actually that most people aren't and I don't know if that's just an assumption that made me feel better about myself (laughs) but I'm curious just from your conversations with people where are we at (laughs) are people connecting properly yeah it's hard to say actual numbers Uh, But I would have the same assumption as you that most aren't. And I take that assumption looking at the way different relationships are. Mm -hmm. How many are ending in divorce and breakups? Mm -hmm. How many, like how normal is that narrative of like that ball and chain? Like, oh, I got to go home to them, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's all of these different things where it's, it's so disconnected and that is the norm. So that's Mm -hmm. why I would assume right there with you that most people aren't having that deep connection. And that's because that deep sexual connection starts long before the bedroom. It starts Mm -hmm. with that morning in the coffee. It starts with how you say goodbye and how you greet each other. It Mm -hmm. is in the different ways you check in with each other. How is your day taking time to look at each other in the eyes, put the Mm -hmm. phone down and Mm -hmm. actually connect. And you're not going to be able to do that in the bedroom unless you have all of that other stuff going on too. And we're just so programmed to be so busy, so Mm -hmm. disconnected with Mm -hmm. screens and going from one place to the other. We're disconnected Mm -hmm. from ourselves. How are we going to connect with someone else as well? Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, have you noticed it's a very personal question? You can tell me to buy my own business. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was just gonna ask if um if moving through this training, if you've noticed a really tangible shift in your uh intimate relationship. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. I would say like throughout our relationship, what we really found is it was almost as if each kind of relationship milestone for us deepened that connection even more. Mm -hmm. Like we definitely did not start out that way at all, but through extra layers of acceptance of like getting engaged, having kids, building businesses together, each of these different levels of entanglement and commitment and acceptance of each other, Mm -hmm. I think allowed us to feel safe to open up even Mm -hmm. more. And so going through that journey and then with that program where it's so deeply rooted in love and Mm -hmm. acceptance and safety and belonging because you need to have all of that to open up Mm -hmm. and so each layer of that that connection gets deeper and deeper and deeper and I don't know if there's ever really an end to that I think it's Mm -hmm. ever expansive where you can truly go with it Mm -hmm. and the connection between what you're speaking of and that uh, and we'll use the word manifestation because that's just the word that I think most people understand but like expansion in life right like when we're maybe you can talk a little bit about that but when we're connected to our sexuality in a really honest loving loving way and and you um what words were you just using there was anyways my mind is like so many thoughts right now but that opens like when we're, when we're able to receive love, when we're able to receive 
pleasure, when we're able to receive a partner or ourself, it's like, okay, well, what else are you able to receive? And that, that expands. And, and I know that there's talk of like sex magic in terms of this. And I know that, I know that Layla Martin's into sex magic. So I can only assume that was also maybe perhaps part of your training. So I don't know if you want to share any insights on that. Yes, absolutely. I love sex magic. I've (laughs) always been all about the manifestation, (laughs) creating goals, getting in the vibration and all of these things, Mm -hmm. and then learning about how you can bring pleasure, bring your sexual energy and life force energy into manifestation. It's like manifestation on steroids. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we all need. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) and it's so much fun it's I find with manifestation again like it has these different layers to it and a lot of people's introductions I know myself personally is like okay say the affirmations like have your goal speak it out loud and like that's kind of that starting point and often I know for me like there's that disconnection it's hard to Mm -hmm. feel into those affirmations at first Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you get into really journaling, getting clear on things. Perhaps there's some of that shadow work that switching your different belief systems. Mm -hmm. And so that helps pave the way and then getting into the real embodiment of it, becoming that vibrational match for that, which you want to call in. And so the next next layer to that once you're able to really feel into it, Mm -hmm. I find is bringing sex magic into it. And so there's many different flavors and ways you can do this I actually do a brief um like five or six minute um sex magic meditation practice most mornings like five-ish days a week and then you can also go to the longer 20 or 30 minute which I actually have available for download in my unapologetic practices collection Mm -hmm. where you're really expanding really building that energy Mm -hmm. and so essentially you're in that embodiment of your manifestation. Then you're building up your sexual energy and then you begin to move it through your chakras, begin Mm -hmm. to find that internal balance within yourself, really coming into alignment and then shooting that manifestation, that embodiment out into the universe, like this beacon with your potent life force energy, sending it out and then letting it rain all the way back in, fully embodying it into this 3D realm, cementing it into your body, into the here and now. Mm -hmm. And just that embodiment piece of it. So you feel a shift after every time you do it. And then pairing that with strategic action makes it even more potent. Mm -hmm. Can I be selfish and ask you to guide us through something? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I want that right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, okay. I'm going to, do I need, is sitting okay? Yep. Yeah, sitting's okay. great. Um, okay. we'll, we'll do a flavor of my morning one that I do. Okay. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. So taking your time to drop in and really center and ground yourself, feeling yourself expand in the strength within this inner pillar from your root all the way up to your crown, feeling that energy growing roots deep down in into the earth, through your space, through the room, and down into the dirt, deep into the earth, connecting yourself with that stable, strong, grounding Mother Earth energy. Allowing yourself to breathe in that sense of grounding and stability. And feeling through that inner pillar, a light expanding 
through the crown of your head, connecting you to the cosmos, feeling that connection you have through the earth, through yourself, and out into the universe. Allowing yourself to breathe here and be present with this energy and this connection for a few more breaths. And now beginning to tap in to that sexual energy by squeezing those pelvic floor muscles. Like a Kegel, just squeezing around your vulva, your cervix, perhaps your lower belly, and giving her some little pumps. Squeeze and release. Squeeze on those inhales and release on those exhales, allowing that energy to build in your sacral energy with each of those little pumps. And then beginning to expand that energy with each squeeze, envisioning that energy moving all the way up to your crown. And on the exhale, releasing it all the way back to your root. Squeezing it to move it all the way up your spine to your crown. And exhaling, releasing it back down. Couple more rounds, moving that energy through your body, through your chakras. And now circulating that energy, squeezing it up to your heart, expanding it in your heart space and releasing it and sending it back down. As you bring it into your heart space, feeling that expansion, that love, as you begin to think about your desires, embodying your manifestation, circulating the energy with your breath, feeling that embodiment, and that expansion. And next time, breathing it up into your throat, or use your voice to speak your manifestation, letting it come back down, circulating it up and down in your throat space. Or you use your voice in your manifestation, in your unapologetic authenticity, circulating this energy, building it through your body. And now bringing it up into your head, your third eye, circulating it through your skull and sending it down, creating the circular motion, swishing this energy around in your head. Will you feel into your desires? Letting this energy build and circulate where you really feel in to what it is you are calling in. 
And on your next inhale, bringing it up and shooting it out into the universe. Sending your desires, your manifestation out into the cosmos like a beacon of light. Speaking your truth of what you are calling in. And then allowing it to slowly shower back down. Breathing in the embodiment of your desires, slowly cementing it into your body here in the 3D world. Soaking it down layer by layer, creating this reality through your embodiment. and sealing it all in with this golden auric egg of light surrounding you, feeling its warmth, its love holding you in your desires, in your embodiment of your manifestation, Allowing this light and this energy to sink deep into your bones, your blood, and your cells. And slowly bringing your awareness back into the space around you. Wiggling your fingers and your toes and Taking your time to flutter open those eyes and come back into this space. Mm -hmm. So that is mm -hmm. a little a little taste. Um, oh, so good. <laughs> My eyes are watering. Yeah. <laughs> um that was so physical for me. So as you were inviting us to like anchor it back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, where was I? <laughs> what was yeah. I doing when this happened? <laughs> My body was like in full tremor. It was like, Z -Z 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 -Z. it was like, it was like, like coming down my vertebrae and, and my tummy, like full tremors into my body, which I love a good tremor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love a good tremor. Um, that was really beautiful. Thank I'm you. Glad. It's powerful. I like that was yeah. it was short it was fast like I do like to draw it out over like 20 or 30 minutes for a longer practice mm -hmm. really feeling into each phase of it mm -hmm. um, but you can see just like how potent yeah. it is even in that short I'm not quite sure how long it was maybe eight-ish minutes yeah yeah I know that's good stuff it's good stuff it's good stuff <laughs> thank you uh I feel like I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to have to like find at what point in this episode this starts. I'm going to like come back to it every day. Yeah, it's a great practice. And I do have mm -hmm. a sex magic ritual available uh, for mm -hmm. download on my website as well. For okay, those we'll that pop that in. Yeah, we'll pop that in the show notes. I think we're all interested. I'm going to speak for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think we're by the all time very this interested. Is released I'll have a whole master class series on it too because it's just it's such a fun topic and yeah. I see everybody light up as I speak about it and I love it so like why not put more of this out in the world put it out the world needs it yeah I really do feel like oh, I, I feel like it is a primary piece of of I don't like the word healing I really don't like that word but of our evolutionary journey, maybe mm -hmm. put in healing. If that word resonates with anyone, I just know from myself and from the women that I speak to and the, and the men, let's not forget the men. This podcast is just primarily for women. There's so much wounding. There's so much pain and wounding and misinformation and and, 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 and in turn, you know, around our sexuality and our sensuality and our, our connection to, to pleasure, be it sexual or not. And like, even in a breathwork journey, if I'm facilitating a breath journey in a group, 
and we have, and I speak to this every time because it's so important and it happens so often is let's say we have someone having um, a heavier emotional release. Maybe someone's crying or they're in a bit of a rage or, or there's some heaviness there. And someone else in the room is feeling joy and pleasure and they've got the giggles and they hold it back because, you know, how dare I be in my joy and in my pleasure when there's so much pain and grief and heaviness around, how dare I be in my pleasure? Or there's also that piece of being witnessed in your pleasure. You know, it, I, it, it can be a, a lot easier for some of us, maybe many of us to be witnessed in our struggle and are sad and are angry much easier than to be witnessed in our pleasure and in our joy. And that doesn't have to be sexual at all. And so the work that you and women like yourself are doing to bring that reclamation back to the beauty and the, the like <laughs> potency and importance of, of this piece of our human life. I just think it's, it's like, maybe it's the missing piece. I don't know if it's the, but it is a primary piece of, of the overall missing link. And so thank you for stepping in with all of your limbs and body. <laughs> right in. <laughs> Absolutely. You are so yeah. welcome. And I have that conversation regularly. I think it's so interesting mm -hmm. how it's almost the go-to to connect with others through like commiseration. Yeah. Oh, how hard things are. Yeah. And it feels a lot more vulnerable and tricky to connect through celebration. Yeah. And that's something I weave a lot into my practice because I think it's so important to celebrate and cement mm -hmm. in to our nervous systems, feeling good about ourselves, recognizing what we've done, cheering others on mm -hmm. and really lifting each other up through celebration. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm. Is there anything mm -hmm. present still that we haven't covered that you're like, Ooh, this is really fun. I want to talk about this. Um, I think we've we've done a good job circulating through all the different topics. I could go like on and on for so many different things, but I think we're both almost feeling that practice a little bit, like the juicy like, other dimension of it. It's hard to like capture uh, those other outward things. Um, but if for those that are still listening, still interested, mm -hmm. um, I just want to encourage you to follow your curiosity. Yes. And uh, really pursuing that, seeing where it takes you, trusting yourself, trusting mm -hmm. your instincts and your mm -hmm. interests, and mm -hmm. just allowing that to unfold and see where it takes you. Because I really think the journey of doing that is truly magical. Yes. Thank you for using the word curiosity. I use that a lot. We, we're, we're so busy judging and like storytelling mm -hmm. and making something mean something. Where's our curiosity, which I think brings us back to that childlike mind, mm -hmm. which brings us back to the play, which brings us back to the sensuality, which brings us back to the sexuality, which brings us full circle. Here we are again. <laughs> yeah, it's all connected. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally connected. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is, we're recording in March. This is coming out in June. Tell the people what is coming up, where do the whole thing, like, where do we find you? What do you have to offer? I'm going to put in some links in the show notes. You're going to send them over to me after tell the people the things that they want All to hear. Right. Um, well, one of the most fun places to connect is through my podcast, Unapologetic with Janine McKinnon. So Perfect. there's new episodes every week, sometimes more. And that's where we dive into the nitty gritty of all of these different topics, mm -hmm. as well as Instagram is kind of my social media of choice, uh, mm -hmm. although I'm not as present as I was on it before, but that's at Janine.McKinnon. And then through checking out my website, I have a free honeypot meditation, which is a great way to infuse your nervous system with that radiant 
qualities, that sensuality, that confidence. So that's available and that will get you on the email list, which is where I am the most consistent more than social media in terms of just putting out there different offerings. I have different free events every month in terms of these different practices like we did here, but a little bit longer, Q&A sessions, all different things. Like I said, I'll have the Sex Magic Masterclass series up by the time this airs. So everything on the website, janinemckinnon.com. And oh, one other thing, I will offer a 33% discount to all of my different unapologetic practices. So the meditations, pleasure practices, sex magic practice, just use the code podcast for 33% off. Okay, beautiful. And you'll give me all of that. It'll be written. Yeah, great. Yeah. She's nodding. I'll give it all to you. <laughs> <laughs> give me the goods. Okay. Whew. I feel like I need a cigarette. I don't even smoke, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, <love> it. <laughs> I feel so good. Okay. I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to go lay in the sun for a minute and um, thank you so much. That was really beautiful. Yeah. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for this conversation and your presence and bringing these messages out into the world. Yeah. It's a real treat. My mm-hmm. pleasure. I will talk to y'all soon.